The Great Story of Soyuz 1 Crash Hello curious people. In a time when staying home is the new normal, today, we present you the great story of Soyuz 1 crash. During the space race and even for a long time after, the Soviet Union was very much less forthcoming than its American counterpart on the details of space activities and personnel. Within the Soviet Union, production and dissemination of news was strictly controlled by state-run machinery. For the West, it was difficult to delineate fact from propaganda. This encouraged and sometimes even gave credence to what were essentially rumors and speculations. Many well-known anecdotes and facts of space history, even quoted in books, have later proved to be false. Even today, decades after the end of the Cold War, there are inconsistencies and controversies in the story of the early Soviet space program. Now we will try to reconstruct a veritable account of the Soyuz 1 accident. First Phase – Soyuz 1 Launch and Orbit on April 23, 1967, the Soviet Union was on the verge of upstaging the Americans, as it launched its new Soyuz spacecraft, designed to eventually ferry cosmonauts to the moon. The United States space program had just suffered its most serious setback in the form of the Apollo 1 fire, and the Russians seemed to be well ahead in the race. Cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov had been selected to fly the first Soyuz 1 mission, an honor that every cosmonaut would have wished for. But everyone involved in the project knew that the Soyuz was an immature spacecraft, with more than 200 engineering issues to be solved, and this fact put Komarov in an unenviable position. The mission began with much drama. On April 23, 1967, a few hours before the launch of Vladimir Komarov on Soyuz 1, Soviet journalist Yaroslav Golovinov reportedly saw Yuri Gagarin, first man in space and backup pilot for this mission, exhibit a sudden caprice. Apparently, Gagarin had demanded to be put into a spacesuit, even though Komarov was fit to fly. This was highly irregular for any space mission, let alone one as significant as Soyuz 1. Some historians have interpreted Gagarin's antics as an effort to save Komarov, while others, such as Asif Siddiqui, counteract this fact, and believe journalist Golovinov never wrote this. Clearly something had happened to ignite such a rumor. Even by the standards of early flights, this was not a nominal pre-launch. The spacecraft was launched successfully at 3.35 a.m. Moscow time, and attained its destined orbit. The problems, however, began immediately. When Soyuz 1 was out of communication range with ground controllers, telemetry indicated that the left solar panel did not deploy, thereby cutting power supply in half. Worse, the undeployed panel was obstructing the sun, interfering with star sensors required for attitude control. Attitude control is absolutely essential to stabilize the craft, as well as to fire the engines in an accurate manner. In addition, the one-panel configuration itself was causing attitude control problems with its asymmetry. Komarov tried to correct these issues, even knocking on the side of the spacecraft with his feet, but the solar panel did not budge. He was advised to keep working on stabilization using propellant. But soon, it became clear that these efforts were simply wasting fuel. As the Soyuz struggled to charge with one solar panel, its batteries were also running out. The mission would not last very long on low power, so officials on the ground finally made the decision to bring Soyuz home. Unbeknownst to the Western observer, the flight of Soyuz 1 was about to be followed by that of Soyuz 2. The two spacecraft were to rendezvous, dock, and execute complex EVA procedures in space. The decision to land Soyuz 1 had therefore caused the cancellation of Soyuz 2. Second Phase – Fiery Return Ground engineers chose the 17th orbit to land Soyuz 1, with 18th and 19th orbits as backups. In order to land, a spacecraft has to re-enter the atmosphere with the right orientation. A low entry angle would cause it to skim off the top of the atmosphere, while a steep angle would cause it to burn up. Hence, it needs to have the right attitude or orientation before the retrofire engines are used. For Soyuz 1, this presented a big challenge. The Soyuz had three orientation systems the astro inertial system, rendered useless by the solar panel blocking it, the unreliable ion system that Komarov had unsuccessfully tried to use for correction, and a manual system. 
the third option could be used only on the daytime side of the orbit, while the 17th orbit re-entry would be from the night side of the planet. If orientation using the ION system failed, a manual orientation attempt could be made during the 19th orbit, which would fall on the day side. By then, the Soyuz would be drawing power from the backup battery, so it was imperative to get it right on the 17th orbit. Unfortunately, things continued to go wrong for Komarov and the Russians. During the re-entry burn, the faulty attitude control system allowed the vehicle to deviate too far from its destined path, causing the automatic system to halt retrofire. Komarov was given new instructions to manually orient Soyuz 1 for re-entry on the 19th orbit. The fate of the entire mission boiled down to this single maneuver. The pilot performed his assigned tasks and initiated the retrofire engines. But the unusual asymmetric shape of the vehicle caused it to drift during the re-entry burn. The automatic system detected this variation from the desired flight path and shut down the engines before completion of the burn. Although it was far from perfect, the engines had fired sufficiently for Soyuz to re-enter the atmosphere. As planned, the orbital and instrument modules separated from the shielded descent module that hosted the cosmonaut. As the vehicle tumbled through the atmosphere, its brake and brogue chutes deployed. However, the drogue chute failed to pull out the main parachute from its container. The reserve chute, which was deployed as a backup, got entangled with the drogue chute, effectively turning the vehicle into an unstoppable projectile. Instead of floating under a parachute, the capsule hit the ground at a tremendous speed. The impact flattened the 2-meter-tall descent module to an astonishing 70 centimeters, causing the solid-fuel rockets at the base of the Soyuz to explode. The explosion destroyed anything that had survived the impact, leaving only molten wreckage. Gruesome eyewitness accounts narrated that Komarov had been reduced to a lump, 30 centimeters wide and 80 centimeters long. A heel bone was the only recognizable part retrieved from the site. Post-crash investigations, conducted with an excess of zeal, revealed the cause of death to be severe injuries to the skull, spinal cord and bones. According to an unverifiable source quoted in the book Escaping the Bonds of Earth the 50s and the 60s, Komarov had confessed to KGB agent Benjamin Rusayev that he was afraid of the impending Soyuz 1 flight. Apparently, he was aware of his slim chance of survival even before the flight. Yet he felt he had to make the flight or the backup pilot, Yuri Gagarin, would be sent instead. Komarov had sacrificed himself to protect Gagarin, a national asset. It is impossible to overstate his bravery. Despite rumors, later on disproved, he never cursed and shouted in rage at the ground engineers for sending him to space in a highly experimental vehicle. Rather, he remained focused on the mission, following instructions and procedures until the very end. In the end, I would like to thank you for watching us, and I would like to invite you to subscribe and like our channel.